Hi there, everybody. My name is Julia Gash, and I run a brand called Talented, which is a sustainable canvas tote bag brand, and we export all around the world. I uh, set it up two years ago as an export-led initiative. Uh, I was already running an eco bag manufacturing company, and I wanted to set something up that was actually driven at an international market. Talented's here today. We're on stand Z22, just about up there. Um, so over the past two years, because I actually had a deliberate strategy to develop an international brand, one of the things I knew I wanted to do from the onset is find partners around the world to help me do that. And that's indeed what I've done over the last two years. So what I'm going to do now is share with you some of the things that I've learned and some of the tips um, and things to do and things not to do. And I'm going to talk for about 20 minutes, and then we do have a good 10 minutes or so for questions. So please feel free to ask me anything that you'd like to ask me. Okay. Okay, so the first question is, why would you want to find agents and distributors to work with? And the answer to that is quite simple. The, the world is a massive place. And certainly, if you have a brand and you want to sell it around the world, you cannot do that effectively without having partners around the world to work with. And that is people on the ground in their own country, in their own territory, who know the market, who know their culture, who knows how it works, and who are really loving your brand and behind your brand. Um, if you don't have people like that on board, you are essentially doing business in the dark. You're taking ad hoc sales for your business on a sort of demand basis only, i.e. people are coming to you, they're buying the brand because they like it, and then um, you don't really know where you're selling. You might think you can find the top retailers in each country, but you don't really know who are the rising stars, who are the waning uh, stars, and also what's actually really going on and evolving in a different culture around the world. Um, so actually, you don't really know who you're selling to. And also, your, your approach will always be ad hoc and reactive unless you can find a partner to partner up with. There's so many different business cultures around the world. We deal with um, Japan, uh, Asia, as well as the States, Europe. Um, around the world, doing business is completely different in those cultures. And unless you really know how to do it, then you can really miss opportunities there. And even whatever we learn, we can't know everything. So by having a partner there, you can actually get them to actually do that business. It just makes absolute sense. If you don't have international partners and you are trying to grow your brand around the world, then quite simply, you're going to run out of steam. You're going to run out probably of money if you are trying to uh, have an international presence, be it at trade shows all around the world. Um, you're also going to tie up your resources because sort of doing maybe 40 invoices for independent retailers in one country throughout a season maybe is obviously a lot more time and energy than doing one order all consolidated to one distributor as an example. So eventually if you don't get a good partner on board eventually it's going to exhaust your brand and you. An experienced international partner knows their own market. They know who the retailers are to sell to and those to avoid. They know how your brand specifically should be placed and how to actually position your brand long-term for long-term gain, not just for a one-season hit wonder, but for the long, long journey, which is what you want. The key is finding that right partner, of course. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about that before, about how we manage them, because... Having your team and managing your team is one thing, but getting the right team, obviously, in the first place is the big question. The first thing is whether you actually go for an agent or a distributor. The two things are very different relationships, and it's actually knowing and understanding how those two relationships work. An agent, they'll take a, a sales commission, and they're essentially just taking sales. They're a rep. They're taking sales for you, for your brand, in, in a specific territory. Your actual um, agreement then in terms of the sale is not with the agent, it's with the end customer. So they may take, for example, a sale for a department store in a specific, specific country, 
your relationship is with that department store, for which they'll get a commission. The average is about 15%. So if it's an agent and they tell you otherwise, like more, then generally it's wrong. It should be around 15%. If they want less than that, then you probably need to question what, why and what are they doing. It might be sometimes there's a massive agency and they're literally just almost like getting in brands, getting in brands to get on their list simply because they don't want their competitors to have them. And that's a problem for you because you don't want to be on a massive list of brands where you're right down there and they give you, what, an hour a week? Because that's not going to develop your brand in a specific country. The benefits of having an agent is that you keep control of the sales process. You can see where they're going, you organize the deliveries, you're doing everything direct with the customer, and you are still sort of having that relationship also, therefore, with that customer. So you have more control. The downside is that it is just a sales vehicle. They are not developing your brand. They're not doing any PR, no marketing. They're not really looking at the long-term strategy for your brand. Now, depending on the culture and which country you're working with, that may be okay. Or you may look at bringing in different tools, like working separately with a marketing company and then a sales agent. Because you'll find in different countries, agents are more preferable to distributors, depending on the country. It, it works differently. Um, if you have got your agents, you've got to keep them on board because they are your team. Just as your sales team are in the UK, or if it's you doing the sales, then they're your neighbor, they, they're your team. Um, so you really have to think in terms of team and you've got to keep, keep them on board continuously. So keep up with them on a monthly basis in terms of how they're doing sales-wise with your team. Treat them like a salesperson in terms of motivation, encouragement. Um, they will want a commission, I say about 15%. That may be a monthly payment, it may be a quarterly payment, depending on how you negotiate that. Um, always pay them on time, never be a day late, because just as you wouldn't pay your employees a day late, you won't, don't pay them a day late. Because you, if you do all the work to getting them on board, you need to keep them on board and keep them happy. The other thing I do need to mention at this point as well is make it clear from the onset whether that commission is based on orders that you bring in or invoice value. Because when you get an order in, it's great having all the order book, but not every order necessarily will come to fruition. Some may drop off because maybe someone doesn't pay. Some may increase in size. But when you do the commission, you really need to get it on the invoice, the date the goods are invoiced rather than the ordered. Otherwise, you could also be paying a lot of commission to an agent for orders they have bought in, but those goods are not going to be invoiced for at least another three, four, five months if it's forward ordering. So you need to be specific on exactly, right down to the detail of what your agreement is. The other thing, if they're representing your brand, an agent is likely to be representing other brands as well. It's highly unlikely that they'll be working just for you. If you're quite long established and they're working with your brand and your brand really does it for them and it's bringing enough income and they want to work for your brand full time, then great. But it's quite likely they'll be carrying several other brands. You need to know how many. You need to make sure they're not going to be spread too thin and that they're going to give you a good allocation of time. But if they are working for other brands and they're established and they've been doing it for a number of years, it's quite likely they'll have friends in other countries who are representing that, that, those other brands in those other countries. And that's how we found our Italian agent, through our French agent, who took, us, took our brand on. And then uh, her friend, who was representing a similar same brand in another country, said, actually, uh, I think Eleanor in Italy might like your brand. And indeed, Eleanor is now our Italian agent. So um, they know people. So again, use your agents to extend your um, network and obviously they come with referrals too. Just very simple things like just being really on top of who you're working with, what time ahead they are. So you're just sort of using sensible time frames so you know where you are in, in terms of currencies as well. You also need to be obviously clear on what currency you work with. We tend to just work with three, which is uh, GBP, US dollar, and euros. And then everybody has to sort of work with one of those. Otherwise, it gets far too complicated. Distributor. 
A distributor will represent your brand in their country. And again, um, as with the agency agreement, um, as one thing I didn't mention on agency as well is that it does actually come under EU legislation for um, as, as an employee. So you do need to check that whatever agency agreement you use, and you must use an agreement, that it is uh, compliant with EU uh, legislation. Uh, with a distributor, um, again, you need to have a distribution agreement in writing. If you don't, that's okay. But actually, if someone's going to be representing your brand in another country and working for you, then surely you, you need all the terms in writing and agreed and signed so you're absolutely clear what it is you're agreeing to. Um, so your working relationship is with them. They are the customer and they will sell to other retailers and customers. Um, they will want a discounted price from whatever you're selling them. The standard is about 30%, 30. Um, again, if it's less than that, they're not going to be making enough margin unless they put on uh, margin at the end of it because they're going to need to make about 40% profit for it to be a viable venture for them. Um, and if they want more, then you may not have enough margin within your figures. So this really goes back to how you're working out your price list right from the beginning. And when I set up Talented, right from the onset, I worked out enough discount and commissions payable to make it viable so that whatever our price list here, for here we've got all those margins factored in. Because if you start to then work internationally, you've got to start factoring this in, then you're pretty stuck unless you make a radical decision or you don't make any money, so there's no point in doing it. Okay, so you need to really factor it in. Some people all have different price lists, but you really have to have consistency as, as well across uh, the globe. Otherwise, you'll upset people in, in certain countries. So a distributor will tend to work one of two ways. They'll either carry stock which is great because they'll have 100 of this, 200 of that, fantastic, that's how we like it, it's easy. <laughs> and they've got a warehouse and they'll sell to their customers from that. Or they'll place ad hoc orders. This could be every season, it could be every month. They might just send you the orders as they go along, but that's, to begin with, it may be okay for the first season as you establish a relationship, but you don't want 15 orders coming in. Uh, throughout. So you want one order coming in, you want them to actually consolidate it, do some of that work, and they can then organize it from that end. One thing to be aware of is some people will come up to you and say, I'm a distributor, I can distribute your brand, when what they really mean is, I'm a retailer and I want a big discount, and my mate's got a business too, and I can flog it to them. So you need to establish if they're one of those, because otherwise you can sign up with a distributor, and actually, you don't really get that much business from them. So you need to make sure they are first First and foremost, a distributor and not a retailer looking for a big discount who's got a few mates. <laughs> okay? um, the benefit of a distributor is they do everything, including marketing and PR. And you will learn lots from them. I learn lots from our distributors cons constantly. Um, our latest order form and price list is completely guided by our Greek distributor who showed me what she was doing with another brand because it was better than ours, and I learned from that. And so it's continuous improvement and learning from them too. The negatives are you, are you are in their hands totally. And if you make the wrong choice, it can hold your business back. It can even taint your brand if they're in this for short-term gain and they just want to sell, sell, sell to anyone. And then suddenly you can be in a, in a bad situation. Or they can owe you lots of money as well if you don't keep a, a um, hold on your finances. So keep a, keep a track of how they're doing compared, again, to your sales team. Always deliver on time and to quality. It is really difficult sorting out quality issues when your bags are the other side of the world. Um, and you don't want to undermine their confidence in you. You want them to trust you season on season and to work and build together. And again, find out what other brands they distribute for. And also, they may know other distributors rep representing those brands in other countries. Okay, so that's just the difference between agents and distributors. So how do you find that right partner? Because this is the key. I'm going to talk about how you manage them in a little bit. But the first thing is to get the, the best one that you can at any given time. And that will change and evolve. And you will review it and you will change partners over the years. An international trade show like here where we are now is a good place to find a distributor and indeed that's where we found our Greek distributor at Who's Next show, our US agent at NY Now trade show, 
we found a Portuguese distributor, a Maison IOG trade show, and our Irish agent we found here. So you can find them at shows. The downside to it is that anybody can come to your stand as a distributor. So you haven't gone out and selected them. They're, they're coming to you. But they're coming to you because they like what they see on your, on your stand um, or what they've found on a, on a website. So, um, but an international trade show is a good starting point because if they're a serious distributor, they will be traveling the world looking for brands to represent. Another way is a UKTI OMIS report. Now, this is a report that you can commission from the UKTI uh, to find. It's a brief. You give them the job of finding whatever it is you want to find. So we started with Japan, and we asked them to find five distributors, 15 retailers. And for that, I paid, I think it was about one and a half thousand pounds. I seem to remember, got a bit of a grant because I just started out doing it, so that also helped. Um, but they um, will get your brand details out there. They have all the connections in that country for the top retailers, for the top distributors. They will talk to them and find the, the best. And then they will send that back to you on a report. So they'll warm up those leads. With Japan, before we'd even got the report, there was a, a big retailer incredibly keen on our brand, and we started to sell within three weeks before we'd even got the report through. That's how effective it was. And, um, and certainly, we, we picked up one of the best Japanese distributors as a result of that report. So that was money well spent, um, much cheaper than doing a trade show or traveling the other side of the world as well. So the UKTI have offices all around the world in British embassies, British consulates, and they have the commercial arm who will connect you with retailers and distributors. It varies from country to country in terms of their effectiveness, but certainly Japan is, a, is an excellent one. And certainly in Singapore, we're just signing up with a distributor as a result of doing the same. I had a much smaller report because I just wanted to keep it really confined. I think it only cost me two or 300 pounds. Um, and that's brought in a, a Singapore distributor through their sister partner, which is Brit Cham. So UKTI sometimes may delegate out as well. UKTI events and trade missions. Obviously, the UKTI are organizing this seminar program here today because they are the experts in growing your business abroad in terms of the help that they can give. They also will organize trade missions. Sometimes it, that will be industry sector as well. So I've been on fashion and lifestyle gift trade missions to Japan and, and Hong Kong as, as well. Um, also, there can be other events through a, an event that I was involved in. In fact, we, we won an award, the Yorkshire UKTI Export Awards. Um, I was sat uh, opposite the UKTI director for Yorkshire, and he mentioned he was meeting the sole, distributor, uh, the sole ambassador for, for lunch the next day. So I said, I want to get into Seoul. I want to get into Korea. We had some interest in a couple of sales. And that led him to contact straight away. And the day after, had a meeting with the sole ambassador, who then connected it to his arm in Korea. And within a month, we had a Korean distributor for free. So that was great. And they are now our second biggest market, I think, in the world. So that's great. Um, internet marketing research, I'm sure you're all looking at your competitor brands. And if you do, you'll also see that some of them put their list of stockists there and sometimes their list of distributors. It may be competitor brands. It may be other brands that you admire and respect and have a similar synergy to your own. And if they're representing them, then they may be interested in representing your brand. Um, that's how we found our Spanish distributor who came to visit us actually on Friday. So doing some legwork on the internet can help and reaching out to people. But when you do reach out to them, make sure that you send a really good email telling them about your company profile and as to why you've approached them as well. Um, word of mouth, product referral. Um, Sometimes people will find your product in shops, and again, any good distributor or agent will be looking out for new lines, new products, and may find your product and want to represent it in their country. That's how we found our, our Czech distributor. How to select the right partner. Um, so once you've established that they are genuine, uh, you should be sending them your company profile and your three-year plan for your brand as to what you want to do with your brand, where you see it going and how you actually want to work. Um, we've, we've got a questionnaire. I uh, devised a, 
a talented distributor questionnaire, which was actually something that came out of a UKTI training course that I went on in, called Passport to Export. When I was, again, wanting to set up Talented as an international brand, I went through all the training courses. Um, I'd actually been exporting as a fashion brand for about 10 years in the 90s before I stepped out for um, about uh, a few years, 15 years, 12 years, can't remember. Um, so I knew how to do it from many years ago. I'd won a national export award. I'd, I'd run a business which was 90% exports. So I knew how to do it, but that was pre-internet days, and obviously a lot's, a lot's changed. Um, so you've got to conduct this like an interview and ask all those questions, all those burning questions about what brands do they represent? How have they had success with that brand? Why do they feel that your brand is relevant to them? What would they do with your brand? How would they market your brand? Where do they see your brand selling? What would they propose to sell year on year in terms of lines or volume or numbers, whatever? Just get all those questions down, write a questionnaire. Um, because it's like an interview. You want to make sure you sign up the right person. And ask them to create you a sales and marketing strategy for your brand in their country for the next year. Again, you're just sussing out how serious they are. If they're serious, then they will do that. You want to see their business plan. You want to make sure that they're good enough for you because you're going to invest a lot of time getting samples out there. You've got a lot of hopes with this distributor. So you want to make sure that they're right for you and that they're going to work for you as well. Voice video, Skype them. Um, you do some face timing. I do that a few times before you sign up. We've been talking to this Singapore distributor since June, July. We still haven't signed yet because we're both trying to get our brand and, and their company aligned for it to be right. So sometimes it can be quick, but sometimes it can take time. Again, just like any relationship. Um, ask for a couple of references. If they're representing other brands, just contact those other brands and ask and see what sort of job they're doing. Uh, they might do the same to you to make sure that uh, that they're working, uh, you're going to deliver too. Um, if you can get a chance to visit, then, then go there. Um, and if you do, get them to take you on a retail tour of, of the market. Um, you want to know who they're selling to, and you want to make sure that they've really got it and that they really understand your brand. When you're starting out, and it's in the early days of your business, it's so easy just to grab a distributor or an agent because you're so delighted that they're going to represent you in that country. But... You can also make a mistake and just get somebody on who's just not going to deliver. And that's going to really hold you back. So which is why you need agreement, um, which outlines your, the, your terms, the territory, the discount, what products they're going to cover, how long it's going to be for, uh, and a get out clause if they don't deliver, or if indeed you don't deliver. Um, a good distributor will want two to three years because they don't want to take on a brand, do all that hard work in the first year, then you jump ship elsewhere. Um, unless, of course, they're not delivering, in which case the, the agreement will cover that. Um, you need to make sure whether it's going to be exclusive or non-exclusive. You're thinking, well, I don't want exclusivity because I want to sell to anybody. But actually, what you really want is one company, the right company, really behind you. Because if you sell to more than one distributor, they're all going to be trying to pitch to the same clients. And before you know it, you're going to be oversold in a country. And then nobody's going to want you next season. So you want to have someone who's going to get behind you long term. Um, but if it is exclusive, you need to set some uh, targets there for them in terms of how much you would expect them to sell in a year. And again, talk to them about that. Negotiate what you think is reasonable. Step it up season after season. Um, but if they don't deliver, then you've got the option of moving on. You might not move on. You might just choose to stay with them, even if they're not meeting their targets. But you've got that choice there. So get it in a in a and an agreement. Be clear on what your delivery terms are, um, what INCO term you're using. Does anybody know what I mean by an INCO term? Okay, so before you start looking at distributors and agents, you need to know what INCO terms are, because they're the delivery export terms that you'll be working with. So when you send something abroad, um, it doesn't just magically leave your place and end up, you know, on a desk in Hong Kong or Korea, there's a way in which, obviously, there's a courier but, or a freight forwarder, but 
you have to make sure that you agree what those terms are. Otherwise, A, it can get hold up, or B, you can end up losing lots of money because suddenly you thought they were paying for transportation when actually you're paying for transportation. So it actually simply dictates in um, very clear internationally recognized terms, just like you have Pantone references, Incoterm is the same sort of thing. It's an international reference guide for something. As to whether it's going to be XWorks or FOB or DDP, who's paying for it? Where does the insurance kick in? And that needs to be agreed and clarified right from the onset. If you Google in code terms, you will find an, an, a very good explanation, probably on the UKTI website, okay, and as to how it needs to be. And there's no real international standard. It varies from country to country. DDP is very common in the USA. Xworks, FOB, London will be very common in, say, Japan. And you need to actually find out what the, the distributor agent is really comfortable with, again, because it depends on their culture, too. Uh, and make sure that the payment terms you agree are manageable. It's okay agreeing to 60 days, but when you've got distributor orders stacking up, you can suddenly run out of money. So make sure that you are comfortable with whatever it is. And again, it can be reviewed in your agreement. Um, check its agency agreement is complies with the EU. Um, you don't have to get a lawyer to draw up an agreement. If you're a big brand, then you probably would. Um, but if you're starting out or a small company, you can download one very easily. And there's places like the contract store online where you can download it, just tailor it. It'll cost you about 50 pounds, that's all. But you must get an agreement. And once you get one, you can read it through and make sure that you can add things in or take things out. And make sure you do get it in writing as well. You may find that it may go back and forth with the distributor or agent. Um, again, most will want three years, 30% discount. Teach them how to do it. Um, when I, my Greek distributor asked me to go to Greece to train them on talented, I realized that's going to be very difficult, as I knew no Greek. Um, they, they did know English, but I had to develop an aid to that, so I developed a training manual, which is about that thick, which has have everything about our brand, everything that you can actually think of. And that's now become a really useful selling tool for the UK and for our sales team in, in, in England too. Um, so think about your brand and how you'd want it to be sold and write a manual, because that will save you hours and hours and hours of explaining it again and again and again or putting it on emails. You just put it online as a resource for your distributors and get an online resource there with all your high-res photos, with all your lookbooks, with everything, and make sure it's regularly updated. The Internet's an amazing um, asset for you to do that. Um, and make sure that they work to your guidelines and get them to, and get them to send you their brochures or their marketing collateral incorporating your brand. We kicked out our USA distributor because it was shockingly away from what we wanted with our brand guidelines. So I made that decision because it just was not to our specification or quality in terms of his marketing collateral. Um, we also do a weekly e-bulletin on a Friday with news, news from the team, news what's going on. So everything to do with us being here today will be on the Friday news bulletin. And it keeps them in touch. Again, they're your team. And team is the word here when it comes to partners. Um, visit them when you can. Um, or certainly encourage them to visit you. We, are, we had our Spanish distributor visitors on Friday. Between last Saturday and Thursday, I was with our USA agents in America. I'm going to visit our Italian agent later this month. I think we've got about 12 partners now around the world. And I've visited, I think, nearly all of them over the past year. There's only one I've never met, actually. Um, so really learning how, how it works. Always take a little gift particularly something that's really relevant to where you come from. I come from Sheffield, so it's easy. You know, steel, we've always got nice little metal-based gifts to send them. Um, send them a questionnaire about how, how things are doing, what they would like to see differently, and read what they say and, and act on that advice or get on the phone and talk to them about it as well. And send them a preview of your next collection before you actually design it. Get their input, involve them. They are your team. Invite them to come to contribute to your blogs on your website. Just get them involved, engage them. 
Sorry, that photo, um, Cuddle and Kiss team. A um, lot of things can happen when you work internationally, which you don't plan for. So from working with Japan and selling to a big retailer in, in Japan, um, I let slip in a meeting. Well, they actually asked if we could do bags for a new lingerie chain store that they were opening. And I said, oh, I used to have a lingerie store in Britain. It was a very directional store a few years ago. And lo and behold, they then asked me to become the brand consultant for this chain of stores. They've now got 17 stores in Japan and I am now the brand consultant so I direct everything on the design so that's led to a completely another business so a lot can happen that you don't expect so have an open mind as well so in the last six months we've signed up three partners we've lost one partner uh, because she was simply too busy and stretched too thin um, I've visited, uh, I've had an Asia pack tour for three weeks where I've visited all the different markets we also took on two graduates uh, through a UKTI scheme, again, where they connect you with university graduates who've got language skills. So we're only a small company. We employ about, there's about 28 of us, I think, but we've got eight fluent languages in that company. Um, so we can do business in eight languages, uh, whereas maybe, I think about a year ago, it was zero. Uh, well, it was English. <laughs> um, we do a lot of, obviously, video FaceTiming. Um, so there's a lot of activity as well going on, keeping them on board, keeping them involved, keeping them engaged and listening to what they say. And again, other things can happen. So when I was in Hong Kong, I was invited by the UKTI to draw a whole map-like cityscape, which is one of the things I do. I'm a designer. I do city-like maps um, of places around the world. And I was invited to draw a scroll, a scroll which got loads of PR. And... Um, has now resulted in an order of lots of bags as well, which is great. And that is now hung in the British consulate in the UKTI in the entrance. So again, great PR, you know, we're in the right place. So lots of interesting things will come out of this because people around the world are really interested in British design. They're really interested in what you are doing. In the next six months, so research from my Asia tours led us in to introduce new product lines that better fit the Asian market. So we've introduced a new compact tote and lots of other different lines which are really accommodating that market. Um, we're now just on the final stages of setting up a distribution center using a, an existing fulfillment center in Hong Kong. And then the US will follow once we've got Hong Kong established. Um, so that our product, which is made in fair trade factories in India, but often but most of it printed in England, it's going from India to England out to Asia again, will now simply go from India to Asia, which is much more sustainable, much more sensible, and saves everybody money. Um, so, so in the next six months, well, this is really more like in the next month, I think. So we're signing up a distributor to Singapore. We've got a target of bringing in another couple of distributors or agents over the next six months. Um, we're also reviewing distribution in two territories because we want them to be better. So it may be that we change partner. And we were recruiting for an international sales manager because we've now getting to the point that we really need to uh, get more people on board. And that is just a very small snapshot of our autumn winter collection. Obviously, we do printed cool, cute bags. But the reason why I've put that there is because this collection, Autumn Winter 15, 16, has really incorporated the ideas and the input of our international partners. So um, we've done a collection based on like skiers and skaters. And so there's a little ice hockey player there, which is really a nod to our Canadian distributor. And they like that. So I'm including them within that. The Happy Holidays, that's really for the US. But in Asia, Christmas is very much a US American Christmas celebration. So that's also very relevant over there. Um, the two cats are my cats, Bobby on the left with half an ear and Jimmy. And that's because my distributors and agents know a lot about me and they know a lot about how I tick and my personal life. And they're always saying, how's Bobby, how's Jimmy? And they say, oh, you must do a collection based on them. So I have, and they, they like that story. So it all really, um, comes down to listening to what they want. But still, you have to stand firm about what you believe in and you don't sway like a candle. You've got to you know, be true to your own self and your brand. But do listen to what they say because they're selling your brand and if you do it right, they'll be selling a hell of a lot more in their country than you're selling in England too. 
I think, oh, one more slide. Um, so this is just a, a photo, just as a bit of a summary, really. So that's me in Korea with our Korean distributor. Next shot along is um, a fashion PR guru in Japan with one of our bags. And she does a lot of help for us for free and now buys bags for us, which is great. And gets us into lots of nice places like Hankyu department store. The woman with the Hong Kong bag on the far right, that's when I got off well, on the metro um, in August for uh, Who's Next trade show and saw this woman uh, with a bag I designed and went, oh, c'est mon sac. And she went, no, c'est mon sac. And I, and I said, no, 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 I'm the designer, le designer, c'est moi. And, uh, and that was a really nice story. And her husband bought it for her in Hong Kong. And so it's nice when you go around the world and you start seeing your product around the world and on the streets. That's a wonderful feeling. It's a real buzz. And that's when you know you, you're doing something right. And on the left, it's just me having fun with one of the team in Japan on the bullet train. Well, not really. Um, on the right, it's me drawing that scroll in, in uh, Hong Kong. So you can see, you know, it's just, it's go, you just sort of go around and the world goes around and it can come to your door. And we blog about it on our website. So I'm just uploading today my blog from New York. But this was one from Hong Kong. And Louisa, who's one of the talented team who's here today upstairs, she went to Madrid to see a key retailer. So we've always got the blogs there wherever we go around the world. And it's basically like a fun business travel story for people. And you're welcome to read them on the Made by Talented website. <laughs>